And, uh, Michelle Malkin, who joins us from Colorado. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, what do you think is going on there? We, we Yesterday, we saw the president and B.B. Uh, Netanyahu. They look like best friends. And then this morning, just moments ago, we heard, and there he is. He's got his arm around uh, the prime minister. And then this morning, we heard uh, as he had a, the joint appearance with uh, Abu Mazen. Yeah, the Israelis, you know, they got to they got to stop with the settlements. They got to stop with the prisoners. They got a lot of problems with this. Yeah, well, I think the White House photo album will reflect that this entire trip was one of faux friendship photo ops um, <laughs> on both sides of the border. And um, yesterday, uh, of course, um, I think the, the unspoken words at the end of Obama's declaration that, uh, uh, that he supported an unbreakable alliance uh, between Israel and America was the phrase, despite my best efforts to break it. Um, and then, of course, today, I think one of the most remarkable statements that came out was his comparison of uh, Israeli and Palestinian relations to U.S. and Canada relations, which had a lot of jaws dropping on Twitter this morning, um, because I can't recall that Canada has been lobbing missiles into uh, the United States over the uh, the last half century. So, so Michelle, um, I mean, if 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 this is just all a photo op, what would you have preferred yes. to see President Obama do in these couple of days there? Um, he shouldn't have gone in the first place, I think. I, I think it's Took clear him long enough. Um, that, yeah, that's right, that, uh, that, that our Nobel Prize winner in chief has um, been pretty happy with the status quo that he is now sanctimoniously condemning um, on this trip. I think the most important part of the trip is going to be when he goes to Jordan. We have learned, I hope, from the Arab Spring that is a friendly king, he's got to stay king. We don't have Mubarak anymore because we are, we're, thought it would be a good move to let him go because maybe he wasn't the most benevolent ruler. But that Jordan yes. King has got to stay in power. Yes. And, you know, we've alienated, alienated every last one of our um, major allies around the world. Um, I have uh, diminished hope. I suppose, um, managed expectations about Obama's ability to uphold um, that relationship. But I guess I'll cross my fingers, Brian. All right, we'll see. Uh, we'll find out. Meanwhile, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein's going after assault weapons, but she's not going to get what she wants. As Harry Reid said, I'm looking at the reality of the thing. Assault weapons ban will not pass. I will not bring it up. Your thoughts? Well, political reality has smacked even Harry Reid um, across the face here. And it's going to be rather difficult, but I imagine that Dianne Feinstein will find some way of partisan yoga to blame Republicans for this instead of her Senate majority leader. Um, but she has doubled and tripled down now, and she's talking about introducing the very kind of um, ammunition magazine ban that was just passed here in Colorado. Uh, so they're not giving up, and she hasn't over the last several decades. Uh, and I think that uh, what we're going to see is an even more hysterical campaign by the gun grabbers, um, by the Michael Bloombergs of the world and the Sarah, Sarah Brady campaign uh, to demonize not Harry Reid. They're not going to be uh, protesting at his office, um, but uh, to marginalize the NRA and Second Amendment supporters in this battle. Well, you're out in Colorado, and a couple of days ago, we heard heard from a Colorado sheriff who said, you know, any upcoming gun laws, new gun laws here in Colorado, I'm not going to enforce them. And now there's a new Colorado sheriff by the name of John Cook. He's uh, pledging not to enforce any new law, this new law that was uh, signed into law by your Governor Hickenlooper. Yes. Governor Hicken Bloomberger. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, uh, there are a, a number of staunch um, Second Amendment supporters in law enforcement, and they were very vocal before these laws were passed uh, by the state legislature that these would pose more of a danger, not only to them, but to the law abiding citizenry here. And John Cook is just one who has stood up um, at the same time that uh, these sheriffs now are. 
are uh, making these public declarations and I think daring uh, to be prosecuted for them. Um, and, and I think that, you know, every law abiding citizen here uh, should be grateful for that. But there are a number of efforts uh, to try and roll back this radical gun grab that is going to do more harm than good. We've got re recall petitions, efforts to repeal. We've got uh, state uh, initiatives uh, that are now going to be launched and a couple of lawsuits uh, that are under consideration, one by the Independence Institute, which is a uh, pro-liberty think tank here in the state. Uh, so we're not going to take it lying down, and I'm not planning on moving out uh, anytime soon. I'm going to stay here and fight. All right, let's uh, <laughs> switch our attention to Gitmo. There are reports that Gitmo is going to be undergoing another overhaul because of growing prisoner unrest. So in other words, mm. federal dollars being spent to somehow um, boost the conditions at Gitmo. 150 million new dollars. Right. And I think uh, the context here, of course, is the warped sequester priorities, because at the same time that uh, the White House is going ahead and doing this, there are a number of uh, other cuts that are being made that uh, many people are, are complaining about at the DOD and uh, DHS and everywhere else that are endangering security. I think the, the bigger picture here with regard to Gitmo is uh, that that place is a mess and not under control, and that there are a number of these... Um, enemy combatants over the years who have been able to orchestrate suicide stunts um, and who have exploited the mm -hmm. freedoms that they've been given right. and the communications that they're able to have with these transnationalist lawyers uh, to spread propaganda about their cases. Exactly. And they're on a hunger strike right now and they're, they yes. are making their own food. They're in a communal setting. They have a, this is like a dorm for them. How handy. All right. Michelle Malkin, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us today from Colorado Springs. You bet. Thanks, Michelle.